So good evening everyone and to our panel, our guests and our online guests as well. It's just great to have you all here and I'd like to thank you for taking time out, as I said, especially on this day where we have uh, lots happening, including budget and, and Ireland playing. So we, we'll get you home in time for those if, if that is of any interest to people. So just to introduce myself, I'm Rosemary Denner. I'm a senior program manager here in Tangent. Um, we have a wonderful panel here. I'm going to let you introduce yourselves now in a moment. But just to give you an idea of what to expect for uh, the evening and um, what we'll be talking about, we are going to look at innovation and enterprise development, I suppose, focusing really on the trends and opportunities and how we might uh, you know, navigate and take advantage of some of those opportunities and equally, I suppose, how we might mitigate against you know, some of the challenges. So we have lots of interesting uh, discussions. So in a moment, I'll get the panel to introduce themselves. And then I've got some questions um, that I'll be putting on high level teams and trends. And we'll see where that discussion takes us. And then we'll open it up for yourselves to ask any questions. And for the people online, they can ask you about some right there who's going to um, watch the online discussion. Who, who, uh, Give us the questions and any that come in here. So any questions for the panel and anything we've talked about or if you want to test any ideas with the panel. If that sounds good, we might get started. Um, I might go to you, Terry, first, just to introduce yourself and maybe give us yeah, a thank brief you. background. And thanks for the invitation. I'm delighted to, to be on the panel here this evening. Um, my name is Terry Smith. I'm a manager in the entrepreneurship and High Potential Startup Operations Team in Enterprise Ireland. So for anyone who doesn't know, Enterprise Ireland are a government agency that support Irish businesses to start start to scale, create employment by, by export-led led growth. So, you know, we support companies at all stages of development and we support for entrepreneurs and individuals as well that are looking to start global businesses. So, um, you know, anyone who's got questions, I'm more than happy to, to take them later. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. And Terry has a great title. I'm just looking at it there. Um, Mark. My name is Mark Bennett. Um, I'm the director of Portal. And I'll get a moment to explain what Portal is a little bit later. But yes. instead, I'll rather talk about that my background had been sustainability. And I studied environmental science here back in 1997. So it's quite circular that 25 years later, I'm back. Um, Trinity Research and Innovation is where um, my portal is situated and that deals with the innovation outputs of the university. So maybe the commercialization, the technology transfer, and also um, brokering the, you know, the research talent that we have with the marketplace as well. So we have a lot of industry engagement. Um, portal is a place really in some, in some senses where that can happen. So it's a physical asset kindly funded by Enterprise Ireland down in the Trinity East campus. And so it's 5.2 acres that Trinity owns um, in the Docklands. So we're very excited for that to come on stream soon. Great. And I know we're going to talk more about Port later, so we look forward to that. And Ken, if we could go to yourself. Um, hello, everybody. It's great to have you all here tonight in person and online. Um, my name is Ken Finnegan. and I'm the CEO here in Tangent Trinity's Ideas Workspace. So our tagline is Trinity's Ideas Workspace. So it's um, ambitious uh, students, and when I say students, I talk about people from the ages of 17 to 70. Um, anybody can come in here um, and participate in our programs, but it's where ambitious students that want to make a change, turn their idea into impact, can come and participate on any of our programs. So we've got education programs, we've got lots of accelerators, so this is kind of like, there's a route you'll see kind of like written around tangent through the journey of an idea. So if you have an idea um, and you want to turn that idea into impact, we can we can bring you on that journey. And obviously we're here part of a wider Trinity family. So we've got amazing colleagues and we've got connections into the agencies, et cetera, to, um, to support people on that journey as well. And previous to working here, I was the chief technologist in IDA Ireland. Um, so I used to work with some of the largest companies in the world helping them turn their ideas into impact as well. And, and you might think there might be a little bit of a, a, a difference between some of the largest companies in the world, the Microsoft, the Apples, et cetera, and the seed of an idea actually, but there's so many transferable skills. So it's actually great to come and kind of like work with 
the origins and the start of an idea. And hopefully everybody here tonight, you're here tonight because you have something that you want to take and, and turn into an impact. So. Great, thanks Ken. And lots there that we're going to be coming back to, uh, certainly looking at it in terms of startups, SMEs and large scale businesses and I suppose how innovation, you know, crosses all of those. So um, we're definitely coming back to, to lots that you were talking about there, including I think the support and, and the, the other initiatives that people, once they do our courses, can get involved in. So I know we're, we're uh, going to be chatting about that later on. So I might just start with um, supports, first of all, which is one of the first things um, we thought we'd like to delve into. Um, and Ken, I might put this one to you, and, and Terry would appreciate you, your comments on this as well. So we know, obviously, that like knowledge, skills, and competencies, I mean, they're at the center of innovation, and you know whether that's like adopting a new idea, or adapting to change, or just, I suppose, finding a new way of doing things, or looking at a problem, and a lot of what we teach on the course is that innovative mindset, you know, trying to shift that, that thinking in terms of new ways of approaching the problem. So um, what resources and supports are required, you know, as we said, is it, even, you know, for those launching a new business, for a startup, or whether you just want to be entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial in, your, in, in you know, in the company that you work in, like what's, what are the skills needed to pursue uh, innovation and innovative thinking? Yeah, I think, uh... Something that we look at here in tangent and maybe overall is there's definitely skills needed like business planning and like strategizing, ideation, risk identification, etc. Um, and these are all kind of like lots of hard skills that people learn on, on different programs, not just here in tangent, but different entrepreneurial and innovation programs um, here and, and across the world. Um, I mentioned earlier on when I was doing my introduction, it's like we talk about this idea of the journey of an idea, right? So. When I was in college, and I started college maybe a year or two before Mark, uh, I just heard 97, and my, my, my ID began with 96, like I, I was ambitious and I would have liked to have kind of like taken some of the ideas I had back in the late 90s, early 90s in terms of um, turning ideas into impact, but there was no supports there. You went to college and you studied, um, I studied information technology and telecommunications and like my ambition was to have a startup like it was that was always what I wanted to do but I never knew how to do it um, so you'll see kind of like the likes of Tangent and other innovation hubs university based innovation hubs they're for students but again what is a student and I know Trinity is going through a big exercise of redefining what a student is it's not just your typical 17 to 23 it's 17 to 70 everybody is we live in a world of of mass transformation at the moment artificial intelligence automation is disrupting everything so actually if we want to if we want to be prepared or if we want to be ensured that we're i hate the word relative um employable whatever we want to say we kind of have to upskill um and that upskilling we can teach the skills right but what's more important is is first of all the somewhere like this um, like tangent you can come where you can take that, that that idea you can upscale but we always kind of like see this idea of of the softer skills when you participate in a program like like we what we talk about later on but when you participate in education it's it gives people the uh, the courage gives people the confidence to kind of like take that idea and turn it into impact along with the hard skills as well so we talk about this idea of the transversal skills I know for everybody at home, you can't see this room, but there's circular tables, there's usually about six chairs around each table and everything is very mobile. And instead of your traditional classroom setup where everybody faces the teacher or the lecturer, this is highly collaborative. And that's one of the transversal skills so, um, that, that we, we um, encourage our students with. So um, collaboration, effective communication, critical thinking, these are all skills that are not necessarily kind of like a hard skill. It's like they're soft skills, but they're absolutely necessary in terms of um, in terms of navigating an ever changing world. And if you want to have an enterprise, if you want to have a startup, if you want to be entrepreneurial in your organization, these are the types of skills that are that are valued by organizations. Yeah, for sure. And just to reiterate uh, to everyone that uh, I like the way Ken puts it from 17 to 73, and I think we've had everybody in between that on, on our courses here. So we definitely don't, uh, the traditional 17 or 18 year old student, uh, I think, doesn't apply when we look at our tangent 
most of them we'll be talking about that a little bit later on as well. Hey, Terry, could I come to you just on the same point? Yes, I mean, I, I think it probably depends on the perspective of the listener in terms of, you know, their interest area, whether they're working in a multinational and they're looking to get involved in, in a project internally, or if they're an individual that, you know, like Ken was saying, wants to start his own business. So I think the important point is access to information as well and knowing where you can, can get information. So I'd say to, to anyone in particular, maybe that, that's an individual that's looking to, you know, start up their own business or has, has an idea even that they want to get other people involved with is to, to be aware of the support structures that are there. And I think at that early stage, even becoming part of a particular network. So for example, you know, Enterprise Ireland will run the New Frontiers programs. And there's the www.newfrontiers.ie. And on there, there's full information on the programs that run, that run nationally. And the, the first phase is typically run online. And you know, someone could still be in their day job and get involved in it. And in those kind of networks and programs, you know, people can get um, access to other people. So probably similar to what's done with with um, within Tangent and with the programs that you run here. And um, you know, half the battle with getting something off the ground is working with others as well and identifying, you know, what skills do we need to bring to the support. It could be, for example, that you know, it could be a very technical person that has a has an idea, and we see a lot of startups in Enterprise Ireland that are led by maybe engineers or someone very technical. Um, the challenge can be, you know, they could get the product development developed, or, but not maybe have it right for the market. So it's getting that balance of skills on the team and even identifying as well what your own skills gaps are. I mean, one person and one founder, you know, is necessarily expected to know everything. So I think, you know, starting out just building those networks, you know, understanding where information is available. And we, we have a portal as well in Enterprise Ireland. It's www.startinireland.com. And on there, someone, anyone can go in and see, okay, I'm in a particular area, a particular sector, you know, where, where can I access information? So I think accessing information is, is important because there are a huge amount of supports out there. And it, it is about kind of knowing where to go to, 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 to find the, the right information for you. But I'd, I'd also encourage people as well, there's a huge um, amount of information available online. There's a lot of online learning opportunities and people listening in here today. But I think, you know, getting out and, to events and meeting people as well is also very important and striking that balance. So, you know, so I think that our portal is a good starting point. But, but equally then, if you're working within an organization or a large organization, even reaching out to management internally and, you know, trying, trying to, you know, navigate your way into how you can maybe make changes internally or bring other people internally along with you. And, you know, a lot of the large multinationals I know have their own entrepreneurship um, opportunities as well. So it's, so it's not being afraid to reach out and, and, and ask for information, I think, is a really important message as well. Yeah, no, that's that's great advice. And we can put some of the, those that information, those links and that up on the website just so people have access great. to them. So that's great. Um, Terry, thanks. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at is financing, maybe very apt on the day that's in it on budget day, although I think most of us haven't had a chance to digest what exactly is going on there. Um, Mark, if I could ask you, so obviously the right type of funding is, I was going to say important, but it's probably critical, isn't it, uh, for innovation and growth and uh, I suppose particularly important maybe at the early stage startup, but right through as the business <coughs> and right through the life cycle um, of the business. So could you just talk to us briefly about the different types of funding and what types of funding are necessary, you know, to drive that innovation and growth? Yeah, I'd be delighted to. And I think one of the things that I would say, and it's very much Terry's point about going and talking to people, people run headlong to try and get funding even before they fully bottomed out if they have a business. So the best way to do it is check with the market, the people who will pay you car, hard, cold cash money for your product. Um, unless you're in the very high innovation phase, such as maybe in Trinity, for example, you've got an architecture around you and you can work on um, a piece of licensable technology. But if you're out there in the world and you're at your kitchen table and you're thinking, I've got a really good idea, I want to go for this. I'd say the first thing to do is to go and talk to people who are already running that business or who are off takers of that service. And then once you've understood for yourself that it's worth your time, then you go to people like Enterprise Ireland. So I had my own experience of doing a startup um, and I pitched for competitive start funding. I was very grateful to get it and it was super. Um, and that's a nice process where you go, you take your idea and you walk it in front of an investment panel. And if you've never done that before, that's quite a big thing, even in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, and even to get to that, that uh, 
um, bar, you have to give a pitch to camera. And Enterprise Ireland do it in a very interesting way where it's a timed camera and you've only got one chance to do it. So again, it's just really getting you into that mode of being able to do the elevator pitch, being able to be credible in front of people who are you know, going to give you, in this case, state money. Um, following on to that, my experience was that I took down smart, small business innovation research funding, which was an innovation that um, Enterprise Ireland had come up with. And it was with the local authority who had identified a challenge in the city that could be you know, worked on by startups. Um, and that was excellent. And then you start getting out into the, you can have follow on funding and the high potential startup unit funding. That's when you're really starting to gain traction. Um, and again, it's not just the money, it's kind of the smart money that Enterprise Ireland has. So you get a development advisor as well who will assist you and guide you in what way you should move because you don't want to go for money too early from the next phase, which is the VCs, because if you haven't got a, a viable product at that point, you're riskier. So you're going to have to give up more equity. So these are all, you know, it's it's not a, you know, you have to do it stepwise, but it's different for every company um, because each market is different. And, and then, you know, you have other types of funding. So you have the angel funding. And what I'd say, the angel funding is great, but no money is free. And often people might have a lot of time in their hand and they want to be very involved in your business and you just want to get on with your business. So that, that's something to be aware of. And then you start getting into your series funding. And, you know, once you have, and you've worked at Enterprise Ireland, You've got um, a market tested product, then you can start to go to the venture capital rounds. Uh, there are also um, funds from the EU, and in fact, if you go under the hood, there are lots of funds from lots, lots of different places. What I'd say to people is you have to stay focused on the point of doing this in the first place because you can get really bogged down in the bureaucracy of things, and all of a sudden, you find you're doing IP assignments and you're doing all sorts of legals and accounting. And not your business. You have to be very careful. And certainly, Trinity is well served internally because we have, as I said, Trinity Research and Innovation, who, for our startups, can, in a non patronizing way, handhold them through some of these processes. And there's nothing like people who've done it before. So, your point to talking to people. So, our, what we would, you know, what you would call a development advisor, but internally, those people have been through this and, and they understand the dangers and the pitfalls. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Uh, stay focused, and I'm delighted to hear as well because an elevator pitch is one of, is part of the assignments for the course that we run in innovation and enterprise development. So delighted to hear you say and um, it just placing the importance. And then there's also the walking down the stairs pitch, or the just bumped into in the corridor pitch, or the all of the other, you know, it's yeah, it, 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 your world. Yeah. Um, Terry, I don't know if you have anything to just add to that. Yes, yeah, just to, to add to Mark's point there as well, and again kind of alluding to the point you made earlier on about navigating the, the the system of supports and you know we get a lot of feedback um in general that that you know in ireland there's great supports out there like there ireland like feedback i get from overseas entrepreneurs often is is that you know i've asked them why why would you like to move to ireland and a lot of them say we're very you're very connected in ireland you're small we can get things done quickly so i know sometimes we can be quite hard on ourselves here but there is a lot of support out there but the challenge can be navigating what's the right support for me so I mentioned our portal, the, the Start in Ireland portal there, which is, is a great resource. But you know, there's some some fundamental basics around, you know, look, you know, start somewhere. So for example, if you're considering a new frontiers, you know, part-time online program, or for example, if you want to talk to the local business innovation centre. So the, the BICs, as we call them, the business innovation centres, they partner with Enterprise Ireland and with local enterprise to support companies in terms of mentoring and helping them navigate the system as well. So they would provide free mentoring, they do pitch training, and they often as well work with Enterprise Ireland to support early stage entrepreneurs. So there, there are kind of what you call effectively free supports out there. So local enterprises as well as ourselves would provide free, free mentoring support to companies. So at that early stage, if you know people just aren't quite sure how to navigate the support start out we always say start out with your local enterprise office there are local enterprise offices right around the country and they are your first uh, port of call even if you're at idea stage and they they will be the starting point to help navigate um other systems but there are, are a lot of free mentoring programs out there there are also with dog patch labs there's the founders weekends that they run 
there are you know a lot of hackathons that are run over the weekend and you know at these why the might seem a bit daunting initially there, there's a lot of like-minded people there yeah. and i you know i i i've, I've met a company um recently based in county Lau that we're, we're developing a food product now you know not everything is a technology product and that lady met her co-founder on the new frontiers program so you know that whole benefit of okay i can't do everything myself and how do i get get myself into communities and networks where i can um you know see others that might want to be part of the team as well and you know i, I think that's a huge plus in Ireland as well, that the connectivity. So, you know, I think that's, that's the key message as well, is, you know, go to your local enterprise office, link in with them, and, you know, reach out to anyone you know in your network that can introduce you to other people as well. Uh, I might just add one thing as well. Like sure. When we're talking about Trinity in specific, if there's anybody out there who has a great idea and they wanted to spin in, that's also an opportunity, mm -hmm. is to spin into the university to progress the research. And then Trinity has its own uh, VC in terms of Atlantic Bridge, and um, the University Bridge Fund is there. It's an 80 million euro fund to fund specific um, companies. I think, Ter Terry, your advice is great because sometimes the information is all there. It's just trying to find it, isn't it? So it's to reach out to your network and do the research to, to, to get the best information and, and, and the one that suits. Can I, um, can I jump in? I know. Jump into that question. Uh, uh, I think there's, like, Ireland is actually really, really good in terms of the support set out there, but it can be actually a little bit overwhelming at times in terms of, like, where do I go and, and, and uh, where do I start? I guess even from like, and I will. I know you mentioned about spin-ins from a Trinity, Trinity perspective, but even from a tangent perspective, we've got six accelerators ourselves. So we've got multiple different postgraduate, seven postgraduate programs that we run here, and and that is about equipping people and individuals with the capacity to 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 come up with their ideas and develop them, and then go to the local enterprise offices to develop the skills to seek funding. We also kind of like have our own pathways, but also they all lead kind of like over to Enterprise Ireland anyway on our accelerators. So we've got two accelerators running at the moment that are European funded um, um, in climate, actually. One is around the built environment, and the other one is around the circular economy, smart cities. Um, there's small amounts of cash available for them, but if you're an early stage startup and maybe you need to kind of like polish your pitch learn your proposition and um, uh, development learn your your learn the kind of like the ability to stand up in front of um, uh, your decks and be able to pitch it this is what we do here um on on the different programs on the different accelerators as well so by the time you get into the local enterprise office or the hpsu highly polished um, presentations and it's and these safe spaces uh, these spaces are safe spaces though that's the whole point of them it's like where you can come and and practice and actually tease your idea and you're around like-minded people you don't you kind of like need to be afraid of of any negativity it's kind of like actually it's really constructive and when you surround yourselves by by that na network essentially in, in safe spaces like this actually it, it's really really beneficial so there is some some small amount of funding there as well but it's part it can be part of that journey as well and that's the part i, I guess is like it can be like overwhelming where do i start you know yeah. one last thing this, this idea of like shark tank you know dragon's den it gives a false impression mm -hmm. you know anybody who's been through the startup journey or even bringing any you know innovation forward it's not easy and so anybody who's done it yeah. understands that and become very generous with their time because they desperately don't want other people to make the mistakes that they had made so actually when you're in it actually a very nice place and then and people's things and um, fail all the time that's normal but when they fail those people then are connected with the people and then they start going into their good idea mm -hmm. and so it builds and so you get this ecosystem effect which is you know and, and i know we've got questions to get through but just to, to, to kind of like no 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 but to marry your point we had a hackathon over uh, here during the weekend so the Ch um, champion change maker so social innovation um, um event six six five or six locations all around ireland and um, hacking um social um ideas and one of the judges came in here on Sunday and he's like, okay, how do we, how do we do this? Like, am I going to be kind of like a dragon? And I'm going like, absolutely no way. You're not putting a little pile of cash on the table beside yeah. you and tearing that person apart. You're going to be supportive. It's there. Everybody is here wanting to change the world. Nobody gets kind of like taken down here. Everybody is built up. And if the idea isn't in the top three, we provide the support to kind of like, okay, and constructive feedback to keep, keep them motivated and going. But it's, um, but yeah, just to, yeah. to that point as well, like, 
maybe the media have portrayed kind of like becoming an entrepreneur can be savage. Now you do have to kind of be, uh, it does toughen you up for sure, but getting into the, get it, becoming an entrepreneur, the first steps, you can find your support network, you know. Yeah, no, no, that's a very good point, Ken. And I think as well, the, the point you made around the support, there is a lot of support out there and it's, a, it's also a message for supporters in, in the ecosystem yeah, as well. well. That you know, and I always I always say it in my role as well is that you know, you know sometimes something that an idea at the stage it's early, but it doesn't mean it's not it's not going to progress at some point, and it is about you know accessing the right support at the right time, and sometimes you might need money early on, but you might need good mentoring, so that when you do get money, you don't spend it on the wrong things, you know, and, and I think sure. that there are other areas as well where you know there's there's a lot of free support, I know the mentoring was one. But there's also um, the access to innovation vouchers. So again, even if it's just getting something very fundamental done, access to innovation vouchers that, that can enable, you know, third um, third level research groups etc. to do a piece of work for you. Mm -hmm. you. You know, you might think, oh, I've, you know, we see a lot of it at that. Maybe someone that's got a great idea for a new digital company, for example, but they're they're not digitally trained themselves. They might be a good marketeer, but they they don't understand the technology. You know, typically accessing the right people. I can mm -hmm. develop the technology for you. So, you know, there are often ways, clever, clever ways to access um, expertise without having to pay for it early on. You know, so. I did, I did that with uh, the yeah. Connect Centre here in Trinity. I used two innovation vouchers. Mm -hmm. They were excellent. Excellent. Because once you start chatting to somebody about an innovation, they get excited as well. So you kind of exactly. realize it's not like being with a lawyer and you're looking at the clock going, cheaper so how so much is this cost to me? Actually, they're going like, yeah. oh, this could help our research as well. So it's a really yeah. positive. It's a bit of trial and error. Yeah. I guess, you know, yeah, we won't put all. And just before we move off financing, um, I know it's too late for budget submissions, but if, if you did have a, a magic wand or something that you could uh, ask government for, what would it be? Wow. Oh, I think. Uh, we we love to scale up our our student entrepreneurial activities like like we see we see such an interest we see so many um, students want to participate like I guess if you look kind of like through through the recent Irish history if you want um, Leo Clancy was in here recently the um, CEO of Enterprise Ireland and he said like back in when he was in school when you got a job in the civil service that was success that was the pinnacle of your career and then he said he, um, from his IDA days, it's like now getting a job in a multi multinational is kind of like looked upon as a bit the pinnacle of success. Um, but the future, I think, does look like, and we can see it here actually. It's like I do believe that tangent and, and innovation hubs within universities are the, the canary in the mine in a way, in terms of we can see the the, the massive interest that students have um, in, in having their, their own enterprises. So, yeah, it's, um, I guess. If if, if if budget if I had kind of like access to kind of um, on unrestricted funding we'd we'd probably scale up a lot of the, the the supports we can provide for for our students between seventeen and seventeen. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, going to move slightly different now on to um, topic very close to my heart and Ken's I think as well is innovation culture. Um, so I might direct this one to you, Ken. Just um, obviously, it can significantly impact business in lots of different ways. Um, so how do we cultivate um, that organisational culture. innovative culture? Yeah, I think I, like uh, I'm sure many people in the room and many people online have have worked in organisations where where maybe innovation is discussed and talked about as a, a, a desirable kind of like um, value or output in the organisation, but but it just doesn't go anywhere. Like I remember working in, in a company once upon a time and like when I look back, I just squirm a little bit. Their innovation room or their innovation space was a room on a floor and it had colourful seats in it. And that was kind of like their idea of kind of like, no, we've created a space, we have a room and there's like blue and yellow and green chairs in there. And, and people go in there and they're inspired by the colour and that's innovation. It's kind of like, that's not necessarily kind of like an innovation culture, I guess. When, we, when we're having conversations on, on our professional programs, for example, um, and we're we're talking to large multinationals or large organizations and they want to develop this their, their, their culture within the organization it really is a top-down bottom-up approach you kind of you have to have buy-in from leadership there has to be a desire there and, and structures and funding but behind that desire for for innovation within the organization 
But at the same time, you have to equip everybody, to, the, the, the organization, with the skills and articulation of innovation as well, you know. Um, and it's and that's a bit of a, a shift in, in mindset. I think even if you look at kind of like some of the most recent innovative organizations, again, innovation could have been kept as a, like it's, it's specific to a certain team. You know, yeah. but you see organizations now investing in their people, providing education and um, upskilling, retraining, because they, they, they back to what I said at the very beginning, like the world is changing faster than it's ever changed in the history of mankind. All these disruptive technologies, we're also living longer and um, your average age for staying in one job at the moment is 4.1 years in, in Ireland right now. So it's like so everything is, is becoming more competitive, maybe more challenging, more confusing. Um, so organizations that want that are or organizations that want to survive need to be, need to be innovative, need to cultivate that innovative culture within within their organizations to ensure that they're getting the best out of their people, but also to ensure that their their employees are are giving what they can as well, you know, and um, adding to kind of like the innovative solutions and. Um, and everybody has ideas, you know, it's like how to, and this is, I guess, the point that we were making earlier on. Lots of people have ideas, how do you capture those ideas and bring people on that journey to implement them? So, in short, top down, bottom up, and it has to be part of uh, an organization strategy. Mm -hmm. For sure. And we're next, we we're going to probably talk around that whole piece about recruiting and retaining and nurturing um, talent. But I don't know, Mark, did you want to come in on that, just on what we're talking about there in terms yeah, of culture? So um, I was working at one stage. I'd been working outside of Ireland um, for about 10 years and came back, set up my own company, and then transitioned into Dublin City Council doing kind of green business sustainability work. And at that moment, they had the fancy room, the old studio. Yeah. Um, but what you could see is that innovation means different things in different contexts. So for Dublin City Council, they got together people from the different divisions, and they those people have to say all oh, respect to them. They worked so hard, and they really got stuff to happen. But it was against the headwind of that organization didn't see itself, not in a bad way, because of course, in the, in the public sector, often it's slow and steady. And it's actually slow and steady that has managed to win the race and keep the whole country together and moving forward. Um, and so you don't want to break the good aspects of that. Um, but you could see that it wasn't, it, was, it certainly wasn't the room. It was the people in the room who used that as their kind of base and went out and sourced innovation, showcased innovation, and showed people that they were actually doing it already. Um, and that the in the drainage department, when they'd come up with the patent as they did for how to inspect gullies, that same, that same process could be used in street lighting or in some other aspect of the organization. But I, what was the sequence? And then I left Dublin City Council and I did my own startup. And at the end of that um, phase, I started with an Italian um, company called Talent Garden. Now these guys were like born on the internet level, innovative. I joined the leadership team and I'd say it was um, older by 15 years of all of the rest of the leadership team, they're all sub 30, and they'd raised 12 million. And while I was there, there was a raise of another 43 million. And that place was singing with innovation. It was the business of the organization, was innovation, innovation spaces, um, and also an innovation school. But for me, the interesting thing was that it wasn't that here's the mantra of innovation, and we're going to keep saying that. Because that gets really boring and people stop listening and you just mm. it's like the principles or whatever. And I remember our CEO, very good guy, very just you know extraordinary. Um, but he became frustrated that when you would ask people, well, what is the principle? What are the principles that we work to? Didn't really know. The people are not going to learn by rote. That's almost anti-innovation. <laughs> but instead, when we started talking about radical candor, for example, this new way of dealing with each other. And that if something was wrong, that you weren't afraid to say it was wrong because you'd created a safe space, that it wasn't personal. It's that one thing. Compared to all the rest of the things you do well, that one thing didn't go well. Let's surface it and talk about it. And there are various, everything in beta, we did all sorts of things. And so that was almost like falling forward down the hill of innovation. And I'd say if, if I was to choose the two modes, I think it is course very um, organization specific but there was something very compelling about that because it really made you believe that anything was possible 
that actually you could do an Amazon Web Services on it. You know, you could have a business here, and then you've innovated and innovated, and you've, you've spotted an, op an opportunity, and all of a sudden, that's the whole direction. So that starts to happen with that company with um, education. And it's such a powerful message, you know, anything is possible, just even as a, as a tagline, um, absolutely. Uh, Gary, can I just ask you then in terms of, I suppose, talent acquisition and, and nurturing talent and retaining yeah. even talent, like, you know, what can businesses do to make sure that, that they have that requisite talent to foster this innovative culture and innovation initiatives? Yeah, I, I think at the moment, I know a lot of companies, that even like early stage companies, startup companies, Small companies, even the multinationals, everyone's competing for talent. And the challenge then is okay, like from a startup point of view, it could typically be okay, how do I get the right people on for my team and how do, how do I incentivize them to, 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 to get on board? You know, for, for more established companies, it, it can be identifying what their, what their gaps are. And I know in Enterprise Ireland, we do a lot of work with companies in terms of, you know, assessing what are, what are, what are their, their business needs. And that typically drills down to people needs, you know, and, and, and often, you know, we, we you know we may hear a company say, Oh, I can't raise money for, for X and sometimes it, it the, the nub of the issue is is, is people related. So there are a lot of supports out there. I mean Enterprise Ireland runs a uh, new spotlight for um for skills on a spotlight on skills program. It's not delivered online and it helps companies develop a, a plan and um, in terms of you know identifying what the skills gaps are, etc. There's also the, the piece there around you know you know the cultural piece in terms of you know you know you know not everybody's looking to 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 move to another job all the time and people you know I think realistically would like to probably stay where they are if they've got the right opportunity or if they've got the right um the uh, you know work life balance and you know you know interesting work etc as well and you know, having the latitude to move internally is not always realistic in some companies, it's a small company. But I think, you know, you know, understanding what's important for people, because everyone mm -hmm. is different. And I think there's a level in organizations as well in terms of, you know, initiatives that 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 are, you know, going to satisfy majority of staff, but 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 it's having that, that blend because sometimes, you know, uh, you know, what everyone um, finds you know, important to them from a skills building point of view will vary from person to person. So it's about having that flexibility maybe as well in terms of, um, and again, organizations, even if they're small companies, you know, find out, you know, what's available to help you help your staff and help you recruit staff. And, you know, I know as an enterprise art and we've um, um, over recent years launched our graduate programs and there's actually support for companies to take on graduates and graduates equally to be aware that this support is out there as well you know and and to to to, to maybe target companies that, that 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 you may want to work for as well and don't don't be afraid to do so so it's back to the point i made earlier on around information and you know and you know with the internet now there's a lot of information out there for everyone and i think it's it's about um you know ac knowledge and information and using that to, to deal with whatever your scenario is in terms of your company and your, your skill situation. Mm -hmm. Can I maybe give an example just in terms of a company that we've worked with that have used an innovative culture as kind of um, um, a selling point, a hiring kind of like a tool for, for their organization. Um, it's, I won't mention names, but it's a lar one of the largest uh, legal companies in Ireland. And and when you think of law, you don't really think of kind of like okay, really like innovative, entrepreneurial kind of culture. Like law hasn't changed; they still wear wigs and black gowns, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but this legal company, um, uh, we've worked with them for a few years now, and the the CEO recognizes that actually, with the with the emergence of artificial intelligence, for example, that. Um, instead of law students or law employees having to go through um, tons of texts to find kind of like um, precedents and all this kind of stuff, actually it's like how do we how do we encourage or how do we adopt artificial intelligence? So we partner with this organisation and we provide them with the school the skills and tools to kind of like articulate innovation, to articulate their ideas, to build their business plans, etc. But they've also brought an AI company in as well to demonstrate the possibilities of technology. And so this is kind of like really interesting from from like 
from our perspective, but also kind of like it's like a leader in innovation. As I say, legal, um, given their staff the tools to articulate, actually we can use artificial intelligence to do X, Y, or Z, and it's and it's absolutely a, a retention tool for for the organisation as well. They're holding they they are holding on to their staff longer. The staff are kind of like able to um, demonstrate actually we've an idea, brilliant, as opposed to oh no, not again. You know, it's like it's like that 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 idea. So nice, nice, nice examples out there. And do we think that we can see that change like post pandemic? Because you know, the, the, like crises can lead to, I suppose, remarkable innovations and insights. Like, have we given ourselves as individuals and organizations, like, just even permission to be more um, innovative? Do you think, you know, post pandemic? I think it forced, you know, it was probably forced a lot of innovation in organizations that maybe, you know, things got delayed. I know even, even on our own team internally, you know, we had to go. Working, uh, you know, um, from home as a lot of people did, and there were some um, like our CSF competition, for example. You know, we would people coming in kitchen in, in 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 person, and a lot of work done in person, and we had to switch overnight to to doing everything online. And you know, sometimes it takes something like that to you know you you know people just, and people can be very in general very innovative and I think the word innovation is it, it, it's thrown around a lot and a lot of the time it's about doing things creatively you know it, you know just making small changes often innovation doesn't have to be some some massive you know transformative innovation you know subtle you know in, innovations and giving people latitude to to go and you know think something's the right thing to do you know you know provided that you're, you're, you're consulting and collaborating with colleagues you know, just giving that that headspace to do things, and and I, I find as well, I think with a lot of um, uh, you know, uh, kind of mixing of new staff as well in organisations, new people force other people to to sit up and go, oh God, you know, why are we doing that way? Actually, you know, by asking a lot of questions, I think mm -hmm. that whole um, sometimes a bit of flux on a team, you know, in any organisation, why people don't want to lose staff, bringing in new people. Can change the dynamic and, and help you know um, small innovations you know become the norm you know as well. So so I think that's that's important to recognise as well and not to be afraid to to you know you know let people just go and and, and do you know what needs to be done um, and but but maybe we're having some framework around okay if you want to change a process for example you know you need to liaise with the following but you, you you've got the I the permission but. You know, people like to feel that they can do things as well, and that they, rather than getting frustrated that the system is has been the same way for ten years, you know, let's see about how we can make some subtle changes as well. So I think a lot of it is about giving that responsibility and the responsibility over as well. So um, I think it's a great it's a great idea because um, a lot of even the students come in think it has to be that big, you know, aha moment, and it really doesn't. Like as you said, a lot of innovating innovation and innovative thinking is about something really small. It could be a you know, process or even a tweak to a product that can make a huge impact. And I think that's what we say. You don't need to come with a big idea. You just need to come with really an open mind as to how things can be done done differently. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Terry. So the next question mark is for you. So this is uh, on Portal, which we're very excited to hear more about. So I suppose Trinity, it's, it's quite unique, I suppose, in that way in that it you know, has that connection with enterprise and academia. Um, can you just give us a little bit about, tell us a little bit more about Portal and its work and what its goals are? The genesis of Portal came from the fact that Trinity punches above its weight when it comes to spinning out companies and leveraging its intellectual capital internally into enterprise. But what's happening is that you you build all of that talent, you integrate it with your Know, researchers internally but then when they literally have to house themselves they have to go out into the rest of the city good for the rest of the city but not as good for trinity as it could be and is there a way that you can actually have both things so trinity has 5.2 acres down in the docklands um, as the freehold for that now and wants to develop a new campus there and part of the plan is uh, two warehouses that are on that space and some other buildings Will be about five and a half thousand square meters of space that we can put 330 um, desks into across different formats of open plan or hot desks or private offices and in there we can have our spin outs we can put spin ins 
so people who want to bring their business into the university. But we can also bring relevant startups from the ecosystem. We can have our public policy partners be able to interface with people in a, an environment that they don't have. And we can you know, also interact with the corporate partners that are around there. So there's an incredible concentration of um, brand equity and international connectivity in that area. You know, you're very short to the um, the airport. So as well, it's kind of the it, it, it It's kind of part of the beauty pageant line as well of when we have executives coming in internationally and they want to see the best of what Ireland has to offer. What we're looking to build is something that'll be an exemplar, not just for Trinity to show what it's doing, but for the ecosystem within Dublin, but then also nationally as well. How can we use it as a showcase for Trinity and the rest of the country um, to generate the more economic growth, but also for Trinity to, you know, do its mission, which is to move the agenda forward, essentially to solve some of the big social challenges that we have in the world. So it's massively imbued with a sense of purpose. Physically, it's um, about five and a half thousand square meters, and we also have a hundred seater event space. And something I think that's really, really crucial is that we have a hundred cafe as well. If you look at Trinity and the wonderful campus, the world famous wonderful campus that we have, which has got a big wall around it. Um, essentially, what we'll have in Trinity East is an extension of that campus, but with no wall, where people will be able to just walk in off the street into our cafe. And you know, we'll have to work out how it works, but almost by a sense of diffusion, begin to understand what's happening in Trinity and how Trinity is open for the public around it. Um, and that'll be to the benefit of tangent and the uh, you know school of medicine and um, arts and humanities and actually the whole of the university so we as a team see it as like an innovation utility for the university for the city for the notion it sounds very grand but it sounds wonderful but it is also it is it is also it is also entirely deliverable actually because if you look at our peer, our peer group nova ucd <laughs> alpha in dcu and the different universities in fact, trinity doesn't have what maybe some of them have, but we also have the opportunity to maybe go larger um, and maybe with a slightly different focus. Yeah, it sounds wonderful. So yeah, you're watching watching this space. So we might just take a break there before I introduce you to Laura, who's one of our colleagues here who runs the um, Innovation and Enterprise Development course. Do we have any questions from the audience or indeed anyone online there for the panel? There's a question online regarding the course work, what all includes. Great, so that leads us into Laura there, who's going to give us a little bit of a brief overview about the course. And just before that, if anybody else has any questions for the panel, no, it's all about the course. So I'd like to introduce you to Laura. Laura Finnegan is program coordinator for the course, so very much uh, on the ground with the students. So she can probably tell us tell us more than anybody about the course and how it runs and how it works. Yeah. And I do actually have a question for the panel after. So um, just very briefly, we're currently um, accepting applications for the level nine postgraduate certificate in innovation and enterprise development. Um, Hazel, I think the applications run until the 8th of November, if I'm correct, and all the information is available on the Tangent website there. So um, it's the level nine program, three modules over roughly 20 week period. So the modules are roughly about six weeks each with a week um, break in between. 30 ECTS credits altogether. And as Rosemary alluded to earlier, um, the assessments really vary across the different modules. So it uh, goes from elevator pitches, report writing, um, you know, customer experience, mapping, um, reflective, you know, personal reflective uh, writing pieces on your own experiences. So it's really practical um, in terms of if you've got an idea either entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial, um, you know, you can, it's, it's a good time to work on something that you might have in your own mind. Um, and I suppose the goal of the program is just that graduates will be equipped then with the creative confidence and skills required to translate their ideas, um, however big or small, into innovative solutions. So that's my little blurb on the program. If anyone has any questions, feel free to, to ask them or to email us in. Um, but yeah. Can I add just a little bit to that? Thanks, uh, Lord, because I think what we covered off a lot of questions around finance and, and uh, taking an idea and turning it into impact. But I think it's really important to, um, 
to like this program is not just about commercial startups it is social cultural kind of like it's it's not just about kind of like um, motivated people making lots of money so we do get lots of people who have yeah. kind of like really interesting maybe they've encountered something challenging in their own personal lives or families or or wherever it might be and they have a they have a, an idea to make the world a better place essentially like and we have so many examples of that going like like um, food clouds is is the one we talk about all the time they won um are they participated in tangent previous to tangent on, on, on launch box and they literally is out and, and her organization they employ 75 people now but they they feed one person every two seconds with food that was destined to be thrown in a in the in reef at our landfill and they repurpose that and that's just one example but there's so many incredible examples of yes we do have the commercial successful companies we also have the cultural the social the social enterprises etc so um so it's for this this program is for kind of like a, it's the broad spectrum of, of individuals i might just add to that i suppose another layer we do have people then who you know maybe their goal is to i think somebody mentioned it earlier on just get the confidence or the competence you know to be better at their job to move into a different area within their organization. Uh, we do get lots of people who are looking for a career change, and you know, this maybe opens up that possibility. So it's just for people who want to think and, and act more innovatively and creatively, either within an organization, but we have everything from large scale organizations to SMEs to sole traders to you know unemployed people as well who, who maybe have an idea. So it's important to say you don't need to come with a goal. And then go to mine, and you don't need to come with a business idea. You'll definitely leave with some ideas, but you don't need to come with an idea. And, so that, and that network as well, like yeah. here. Yeah. So, a huge part of the, the work there is, um, uh, Laura mentioned, uh, in part of the assessment is group work as well. So, you do really, you really build a really strong network with um, you know, these, these people become a little bit like your family, maybe, you know, for the course of the, um, for the, course of the program. But one of the the great advantages, I guess, that our alumni would talk about is that network of people, you know, like-minded people who are trying to do and act the same. Um, and actually, we've had businesses start start up out of the courses, you know, where people have got together with their ideas, come together, and and pooled their resources and skills, if you like, and went on to successful business. So, um, yes, really, I suppose it's for anybody, really, you know, is the, it, the course. It's a, it's springboard funded, so for people in employment, you just pay 10% of the course fees, and for the unemployed people, it's completely subsidized. But if you go on to our website, um, our email address, phone numbers there, you can get in contact directly with myself or Jane, who is the student's equipment officer, and we can help you know talk you through either the course or the application process, and if the course is right for you. Does anybody have any questions there we can help with before? Laura, I think you had a question. Yeah, can I ask just um, before you finish, um, just the three of you, I guess, what would be one piece of advice if someone had a big idea, a small idea, no idea, but was just looking to be innovative or get involved in an innovation of some sort? My hobby horse, if I could, for my hobby horse is that all of a sudden everybody seemed to get afraid of the phone. <laughs> and, you know, the answer is not on, the, no. <laughs> with all due respect to all the answers being on EI's website, and you put here's that. But actually, the inter the inter not on the internet, it's in people's minds, mm. and it's the advice that people will give you. So the number one thing you do is, and you'll be surprised if you pick up the phone to suppliers, competitors, you know, people are, like I said, very generous, surprisingly generous. Um, and I think being in an environment, you know, where you're around motivated people, it'd be very hard to get a job or be in any other situation where you'll be surrounded by so many bright people who are motivated to change the world, whether it's their own world, whether it's their community, whether it's the whole world. That doesn't come around so easy. You know, that's got to be, that's pretty precious. Um, and I think that's an experience that people should treat themselves with at least once in their life. And so I think everybody should do a startup once in their life. And um, at least it gives you great, you know, yeah. resilience, I think, into the future. Great idea to be on the school school curriculum. Yeah, I, I think the idea of even the programs that you run here, the postgraduate programs, are are a great uh, point uh, from that point of view. Of, okay, someone's an idea, they've got that itch maybe to start up a company or you know bring something forward or whatever. You know, becoming part of those programs or courses, being a participant, it actually it's the point I made at the start opens up that network. 
I actually I studied in undergrad in Trinity many years ago, and um, but I did a postgrad through Enterprise Ireland and with four or five companies. And I remember there's about 20, 20 of us on the on the program at the time, and a lot of that group um, went on to start up companies afterwards because it, again they now they didn't necessarily do it with other people that were on on the team. Yeah. But they built up that network. And they use that network for oh I need access to a good accountant oh I call you know my buddy from the mm -hmm. course or you know I, I I need a bit of mentoring or help oh I know they're an expert on on law I'll reach out to them so that point I made earlier on about building that network you know participating in these kind of programs I think is a fantastic idea because it builds your network gives you access to other people like minded and other people with maybe skill sets, skill sets that you don't have yourself. And they, you know, and I find people are generally want to help other people, but by participating in the program, Laura, that you're you're um, um, briefing on today, that kind of thing I think is really really important because often, you know, starting a company can be quite isolating, and I think you know, getting yourself into that community to build your own skill set, but also build those connections on programs like this, I think is really important. I guess you're giving yourself a frame within which yeah. to do it, you know, yeah. direction, yeah. And I think we would hear one weekend time and again, just that, you know, the networking piece of the collaborative nature of the program, how it lends to, to, to that. And as you said, everyone's thinking and working to the same goal, so mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it does really help. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm conscious I have like 30 seconds to kind of like make a comment, yeah. <laughs> like just, just take the first step, you know. Um, yeah. What's that old Chinese proverb? It's like a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Yeah. But when you actually fill out the application to participate on one of these programs or any program, to be honest with you, you've kind of like you're you're you've mentally crossed that barrier and and you've you've begun that journey. And like I'll be really quick. You mentioned during during the COVID, during COVID, um, like how has that affected us? Some of the most successful companies and individuals during COVID were the ones that were able to pivot, were the ones that were able to change their mind and, and learn that agility and um, develop their adaptability and become very resilient. And, and those are our values here, agility, adaptability and resilience. So those, these are things that when you participate in a program like this, you will leave here with you may have a startup, you may be a, in, a, in a large organization, be the entrepreneur, but actually you'll, be, you'll have the skills to navigate a complicated world. And just finally, I would say for anyone who's thinking about doing the course, just get in contact with us because we can have that conversation and just make sure that it is the right course and talk us through any of the other details that you need. Other questions? I'd just like to thank our panel. It's been lovely to meet you and chat to you. Um, you. I've, I've learned loads, I have to say. So Mark, Terry and Ken, thank you very much. Thank you to everyone here and those online. And we look forward to chatting to some of you.